So um, I'm not a humble guy. You guys know that. <laughs> I, I try to tamp it down. I'm not nearly as bad as I used to be. But I've written one of the best columns, I think, that I put out there in months, maybe years, about why impeachment is really taking place. And I don't even know if President Trump knows why it's taking place. But the column is there for you to read. I hope you do. I'm going to get into it a little bit, but you got to look at my logic here. It's not long. I don't bloviate on uh, print as much as I bloviate on camera. Um, so I hope you check it out. So the impeachment thing starts tomorrow, 1 o'clock. Actually, they'll be there at noon uh, taking care of business. Nobody really knows how it's going to go down. Uh, the turtle, Senator Mitch McConnell, the majority leader, he's got his plan, but he's not telling anybody. So there'll be a bit of drama tomorrow when we come on um, the No Spin News. So we really don't know how they're going to structure this. What we do know and what is absolutely going to happen is a lot of grandstanding, a lot of smearing, a lot of propaganda, a lot of that, because this is the last chance for the resistance, the hate Trump cadres, to get the American public's attention to the evil of Donald Trump. This is it. We tried everything for three years. This is the end game. After this, we go into the primary season, um, the voters take over, the press will still be there hammering Trump every hour on the hour, but this is it. So you can expect the Demo Democrats to try to elongate the process, although they run a big risk in Iowa. Iowa's two weeks from today, the Iowa caucus. And I'll be able to predict it <clears throat> probably the end of next week. I'll be able to tell you who's going to win it. Can't now. Um, but you've got Warren and um, you got Klobuchar out of the process and Bernie Sanders as well. They can't campaign while they're listening to all this impeachment stuff in the Senate. All right. So it, it does have a direct impact on the electoral process. Hillary Clinton. So there's a documentary on Hillary Clinton. All right. And that's fine. Am I going to watch it? No. Uh, I know Mrs. Clinton a little bit. I certainly know what she's done politically over the years. I don't need to watch a documentary about her. The Hollywood Reporter is a industry publication, magazine, got a website. They love Hillary Clinton. They love any liberal Hollywood person. So they ask, they're interviewing her about documentary. And then they get around to politics. Put the full screen up, and I'll quote it. Hollywood Reporter. In the documentary, you're brutally honest on Bernie Sanders. He was in Congress for years. He had one senator support him. Nobody likes him. Nobody wants to work with him. This is the Hollywood Reporter quoting Hillary Clinton in the documentary. He got nothing done. He was a career politician. It's all just baloney, and I feel so bad that people got sucked into it. Then the Hollywood Reporter asked Hillary Clinton, does that assessment still hold? Hillary Clinton, yes, it does. So again, in the documentary, Hillary Clinton says on camera, nobody likes Bernie Sanders, nobody wants to work with him, he got nothing done, he's all baloney. Okay, that's a headline. As Bernie would say, it's like, I don't know about corporations, but okay, it's a headline. But then you always have to look behind this. Why would Hillary Clinton say that? Now, the question from The Hollywood Reporter had to be answered, but she said it in the documentary. All of those things. Why? Why? It's got to be a reason. Hillary Clinton doesn't do anything by accident. She's a smart woman. She's a calculating woman. Why did she do it? I said on a Mark Simone WOR radio program today, and this is a guess, and I told Mark and, and the WOR audience, I'm guessing. I'm guessing. But it's certainly possible that very powerful people in the Democratic Party have had discussions with Hillary Clinton about Bernie Sanders because they, Podesta, the Obama people, they don't want Bernie Sanders to be the nominee because they know he's going to get crushed by Trump. 
All right, so I'm going to play you two sound bites on this impeachment thing. The first one is a um, brawl that the Supreme Court uh, Justice John Roberts, the Chief Justice, scolded all of the uh, people in the Senate about. Roll it. Only guilty people try to hide evidence. So I guess when President Obama instructed his Attorney General to not give information, he was guilty of a crime. That's the way it works, Mr. Nadler? The President's counsel has no standing to talk about lying. He's been making false allegations against the President. The only one who should be embarrassed, Mr. Nadler, is you. All right, so Justice uh, Roberts, hey, knock it off. Okay, just let's get to the facts and get through it. Um, the second soundbite is from President Trump today in Switzerland. He's back already um, in, the, in the USA. But before he left Switzerland, he said this, go. I would rather go the long way. I would rather interview Bolton. I would rather interview a lot of people. Uh, the problem with John is that it's a national security problem. You know, you can't have somebody who's at national security. And uh, if you think about it, John, he knows some of my thoughts. He knows what I think about leaders. Uh, what happens if he reveals what I think about a certain leader and it's not very positive and that I have to deal on behalf of the country? It's going to be very hard. It's going to make the job very hard. Uh, he knows other things. And uh, I don't know if we left on the best of the terms. I would say probably not, you know. All right, so that's a very measured and very important statement. And President Trump's explained, look, I can't let my uh, counsel and my national security people go into uh, the Senate under oath and speak about our private conversations. That's what executive privilege is. Can't hand over documents, all right, that we have crafted. Um, you elected me to be president. I'm being president. I seek advice. I write things down. We can't give that out. That's classified information. That is a very measured and rational position. And I was happy to see it because all we get from the media is Trump calls Nadler a uh, fat troll. He calls Schiff a pencil neck geek. Oh, you don't want that. I would like to see Donald Trump do more of what he just did. I'm president. This is why I do what I do. Interesting, Joe Biden, running around Iowa, was asked by a reporter, hey, your name is on the top of the witless list from the Republicans. Maybe they'll trade. So John Bolton will come in in return for you. And here's how Joe Biden replied. The reason why I would not make the deal, the bottom line is, I, this is a constitutional issue, and we're not going to turn it into a farce, into some kind of political theater. They are trying to turn it into political theater, but I want no part of being any part of that. Ah, it's a constitutional issue, is it? What Mr. Biden is saying there are two things. Impeachment is constitutional, okay, but he's not going to show up even if subpoenaed because of executive privilege. He would claim executive privilege as vice president under Barack Obama. That's what he's, he's doing exactly the same thing, exactly the same thing that President Trump will do, executive privilege. Now, I wanna break this to the former vice president. It's already a farce, but to have him stand there and say they wanna turn into political theater, like the Republicans want, I mean, are you that dense? And the answer is yes, he is. Yeah, absolutely. Joe Biden is so divorced from reality, I can't even tell you. He's in Star Trek land. Just for those of you thinking about voting for him. He is not here on planet Earth. Um, so the fascinating part is Trump and Biden, exactly the same posture. Executive privilege. That will never be reported by the media. 
You'll never get that on cable news. You can sit there and people do hour after hour after hour and watch and you'll never hear that. And that's why you're here.